When you drill down to the 36 dividend aristocrats that I specifically recommended in January, one of them got acquired. The other 35 are down just 4.2% on average, and that's without factoring their dividend payments, which, you know, are actually bountiful. More importantly, though, how did these stocks do from January 3rd through the bottom of June 16th? Remember, the whole point of owning the dividend aristocrats is that they can try to protect you from the ugliness of the bear <laughs> on the way down. That's important given the fact that Jay Powell's committed to bringing the pain. During this difficult period for the market, our favorite 35 dividend aristocrats were down 10%. Again, I know, not great. But the S&P was down 23% over the same period. The Nasdaq lost nearly a third of its value. If you think the rest of the year will look more like the tough first half than the last couple of months, which is reasonable given Powell's comments, although I am more bullish, then it's not too late to swap out of the faster-growing tech stocks and take shelter in the dividend aristocrats again. By the way, when I say faster-growing tech stocks, I'm talking about stocks that are losing money. I am not focused on tech stocks that are making money as sales. Those, I think, work. But I'm not satisfied with merely outperforming a bad market. I want to help you try to make money, which is why this time we're being more selective. Let me give you my top 10 dividend aristocrats for the final four months of the year. Now, we're going to start with one I rarely talk about. It's called Archer Daniels Midlands, ADM. Uh, that's one of the top agricultural plays out there. They sell seeds and also process all sorts of crops. This thing's up nearly 30% for the year, although it's pulled back more than 10 bucks from its highs in April as commodity prices lately have collapsed. But I got to tell you, I'm not betting against the commodity prices too much if they come down a lot. Uh, crop prices have begun rebounding from the lows, and the ag stocks are moving higher again. Remember, I just did that piece on, on how the ag bull market last week. I like Archer Daniels as a play on supply chain disruptions. Remember, Ukraine accounts for 13% of the world's calories, and their business has been cut in half. Plus, ADM trades at less than 13 times earnings with a nearly 2% yield. Conservative, decent stock. Now, here's one that really intrigues me, given what's happened in Europe. General Dynamics, the defense contractor. Every time we send weapons to Ukraine, they come from our stockpiles, which eventually need to be replenished. At the same time, every government in Eastern Europe suddenly wants to be armed to the teeth to defend against a newly aggressive Russia, which, by the way, we're treating as if it's a sanctuary Russia. You can't attack them. I like the whole sector, but General Dynamics is the only dividend aristocrat in it, and they just announced a $1.1 billion deal to sell Abrams tanks to Poland last week. Unfortunately, they also have a business jet division that will no doubt get hit if we have a nasty recession. But that hasn't stopped the stock from rallying 11% this year, aided by a very hands-on management that knows what's needed in a less secure world. Again, 19 times earnings, 2.2% yield. I like it here. Third is one that we've been bullpenning, think it's terrific for the, uh, for the portfolio or the charitable trust, and that's Coca-Cola. Textbook to, vis- to fight defensive stock, right? I mean, exactly what you want to own in a recession where commodity prices have come down substantially from their highs. Coke protects your portfolio with a 2.8% yield, and at the same time, they've got some exciting growth initiatives. Topo Chico hard seltzer. I've got a ton of that in my refrigerator. Jack and Coke in a can, that's in Mexico, come in here. By the way, can I just say I've tasted them all. Jack and Coke Zero is a complete winner. The stock's been flat for the last couple of months. Don't worry, not the soda, just the stock. But now that the Fed's reminded us they mean business, I think it's time for Coke to shine again. Fourth is Hormel. You know I've had them on a bunch of times. That's the packaged food company behind Spam, Jenny O, uh, Applegate Farms, Skipping Peanut Butter, and then another classic defensive, Hormel just bought that Planters Peanuts from Kraft Heinz. You know I love that deal. Uh, It's very, very smart, and Kraft Heinz needed the money. I think the maker of Spam is a good trade down play, too. Plus, it's almost time for pumpkin spice spam season. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.